You know, I think it's the dream of just about everybody when they get into Airsoft is to have their own customized weapon system, which is basically like their own personal statement when they walk out onto the battlefield. It's kind of like a little bit of psychological warfare where you want a gun that's so scary looking, it's just going to scare the bad guys right off the battlefield and you're not even going to have to fire a shot. The trick is with customizing guns is picking out a system which is capable of being customized without breaking the bank. And to that end, what we're going to be focusing on this week is the system that allows a gun to be more customizable than another, which is the universal Picatinny rail system for airsoft guns. The Picatinny rail, which can also be referred to as the military standard 1913 rail, the Stanag 2324 rail, or simply as the tactical rail, is a bracket used on some firearms in order to provide a standardized mounting platform for accessories and attachments. The rail consists of a series of ridges with a T-shaped cross section interspersed with flat spacing slots. Accessories are mounted either by sliding them from one end to the other or by means of a weaver mount which is clamped to the rail with bolts or by thumb screws or levers or onto the slots between the raised sections. The rail itself dates from work by the arms company in the early 1980s in standardizing the weaver design. In December 1994, the United States military accepted the M16A2 and the M4 carbine modified with new upper receivers where rails replaced the handguards. The name for the rail came from the Picatinny Arsenal, whose role with the rail was to test and evaluate it and to create a military standard for it. The rail was originally designed for scopes, however once established the use of the system was expanded to other accessories such as tactical lights, laser aiming modules, night vision devices, reflex sights, foregrips, bipods, and bayonets. Because they were originally used for telescopic sights, the rails were first used only on the receivers of large caliber rifles, but their use has extended to the point that Picatinny rails and accessories have replaced iron sights in the design of many firearms. Now before we get too far along, I think it's important to point out that if you're trying to pick a weapon system to use in order to customize it, to me the best option is to pick out a weapon system that has the most amount of accessories that are available for it, which of course is the M4. The nice thing about the M4 is you can go from the basic bone stock carbine to a fully customized gun like this and get a ton of different accessories that are available for it. You can't do this to any other gun that's out there. Sure, you can get accessories for an AK-47 or a G36, but just the sheer number of accessories that are available for the M4 make it the obvious choice to me. Now to me, the easiest way to get a rail system onto an airsoft gun is to buy one that comes with it pre-installed from the factory. This is the G&G &G Combat Machine Raider, which comes with a quad rail pre-installed onto the front handguard. And this serves two purposes. Number one, it's designed to work with this gun so you don't have to worry about futzing around with it to get it to mount up properly with the upper and the lower receiver. The second thing is it's a lot more cost effective. This only adds about maybe 10 or 20 dollars to the cost of the base model gun, where if you go out and buy a quad rail, it's going to cost you about 60 to 100 dollars just for the rail alone, not to mention mounting it and actually getting it put onto the gun. So that's something to consider when you're getting a quad rail. So what if you already have a standard M4 carbine, but you want to adapt it for a Picatinny rail? Well, the least expensive way to do that is to go out and get one of the NC Star rail systems. These basically mount onto the standard cooling holes that are drilled onto the bottom of the front handguard. This allows you to mount the rail onto it without having to modify the front handguard in order to put a Picatinny rail on it, and it makes it a very cost-effective way to add a rail to a standard M4. Your next option for getting a rail system for an M4 is to get one that replaces the front handguard on a standard M4. This is the UTG quad rail system. It comes in a number of colors. Obviously, we've got the basic black one here. This is a milled aluminum mil-spec quad rail. The nice thing about it is it comes in two pieces, so you don't have to disassemble the gun. It actually bolts onto the existing frame, so you don't have to modify it or remove the front sight in order to mount this particular rail system onto the gun. Another option is the free floating handguard which mounts onto a standard M4. Now this requires a lot more work in order to mount this onto the particular gun that you want to put it on. First of all you have to remove the delta ring which normally holds the handguard on. This handguard actually mounts the barrel onto the receiver so it's not just a handguard this is actually holding the gun together. 
The second problem is you have to remove the front sight in order to slide this system onto the barrel and then you have to remount the front sight onto the gun. So it's a lot more work to put one of these things onto an M4, but if you're looking for that custom look to your gun, this does look pretty darn cool. One gun that's a lot of fun to customize is the H&K MP5 design. The standard guns usually come with the basic handguard that looks something like this. The nice thing about MP5s is they're very easy to get the handguards off. You basically remove one pin and then the handguard pulls right off the gun like that. Now as easy as it was to disassemble the MP5, it's pretty much just as easy to put the new handguard onto it. The thing you have to consider with the MP5 is that the battery normally fits into the front handguard. So if you're putting a rail system onto it, it may not have enough room to house the battery. So you may have to find another spot to put the battery, whether it's in an external box or locating it to a different spot on the gun. But putting the handguard onto the gun is a simple process. It just basically slides on and then you pin it and it's ready to go. Another option if you've got the MP5 is to go ahead and put the quad rail system onto it. This is a full metal system which includes the front handguard as well as a claw mount which mounts to the upper receiver. Now obviously there's no room inside of this handguard to put a battery inside of it, so you're going to have to put the battery into the rear stock. Which is not a bad option on an MP5 because it gives you a lot of room to put a fairly big battery in it. So for whatever aesthetics that you're losing from not having a folding stock, to me it's worth it to have a gun that you're going to be able to shoot a lot longer and not have to change batteries as often. Now I know a lot of you guys are big fans of the AK-47 out there, but you have to consider that there's a huge difference between the AK-47 in the real world versus the airsoft world. In the real world, the AK-47 is the most prolific gun ever produced. So if you want to get a gun that you're guaranteed to be able to get extra accessories and parts for it, get an AK-47. If you want to get an airsoft gun that's going to have the most parts for it, I'm afraid the M4's got this one beat hands down. But you can get custom parts for this gun. Now this is the basic quad rail system that goes onto an AK-47. Now keep in mind, you can get rail systems for AKs, there's just not as many of them that are available for it as for the M4. You also have to consider that in order to put this rail system on, you have to pretty much disassemble the whole front end of this gun in order to slide on the upper and the lower grips onto this thing. So if you're not much of a gunsmith, you may want to consider either sticking with an M4 or getting an AK that has the rail built into it when you buy it from the factory. One of the really great things about Airsoft is that if you've seen it in the real world, then you can probably do it in the Airsoft world. For instance, we've got the M249 saw with the rail system on the upper handguard. Now in the real world, they do a lot of these things to mount scopes and sights onto the guns, but in the Airsoft world, these are not nearly as common. The problem is, is this is a fairly custom job in order to mount this onto the gun, where you actually have to cut parts of the gun, you have to drill it and tap it, and actually bolt this thing onto it. So it's a fairly custom job to do this. So the only real question is if you want to put a system like this onto a gun, well, from my standpoint, number one, how much money do you have? And number two, how much time and effort are you willing to spend in order to mount this kind of system onto a gun? But if you have the time and energy to do it, you can pretty much adapt just about any gun to a rail system. One of the nice things about the more exotic guns that are out there is most of them come with rail systems built into the original design, so you don't have to add them in later, where with the M4 it's more of a custom thing. The only problem with these kind of guns is that the rails are pretty much set how they are, so there's not a lot of choices in the way of modifying these guns to put longer or different kinds of rails on it. But so long as this design works for you, this may be a good option. So that's the basics on mounting rail systems onto airsoft guns. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to email us at replayairsoft at yahoo.com. We'll take a few minutes to answer your questions and get you on the right track. Best bet is to actually bring your gun here to the showroom, let us take a look at it, and we'll make sure that your rail system mounts up with your receiver on the first try so you're not sitting around scratching your head trying to figure out what you did wrong. So feel free to stop on by, and until then, we'll see you the next time.